Okay, check this out. NASA announces the graduation of 11 astronauts from its prestigious Johnson Space Center in Houston. In our green room right now are two professors from the University of San Diego who taught some of those astronauts everything they know. We're going to talk to them after the break. Well, NASA announced 11 new astronauts graduated at its Johnson Space Center in Houston. Now, this is the first class of astronaut candidates to graduate under the Artemis program. They completed more than two years of basic training before graduation, and now they're going to be eligible for assignments to the International Space Station, including with that Artemis missions to the moon and even missions to Mars. Some smart cookies up there. How exciting. Two Two professors who taught those astronauts during their time at USD are joining us now. Yeah, here to talk about the accomplishments of those astronauts are professors Ernest Kim and Diane Fossis. Or Office. office. You told me it rhymed with office, and then I got started talking about other things. Okay, first of all, um, welcome to both of you. Oh, thank thank you. you. What is it like, you know, you both had how many of those students that we just saw graduate today in your classes? I had uh, Matt. Yeah, and I had Johnny Kim. And now to see what they have accomplished as a professor, tell me what that feels like. No, oh, you just beam, right? You would, you, you spend so much uh, effort and, and hope and, and, um, and sort of excitement, and you try to give, give whatever the student needs to, to grow and get where they want to be. And then when you see that they get there, it's, mm. it's just heartwarming and thrilling and... When I was a kid, oh my gosh, I wanted to go to space camp so bad. We didn't have that near me, so I did not go. So what is, with the background of these people, does it need to be, if there are kids out there who they would love to become an astronaut one day, mm. what do they need to do to get into one of your classes? Well, I think it's uh, drive, desire, and the willingness to do hard work. Um, uh, you don't really have to be, you know, the ultra smart person. Just having the drive to do well in whatever endeavor you uh, choose to do. Do you have to be strong in any kind of, uh, I mean, is it just math and science or do you need to be well-rounded? I mean, what kind of person is well-suited to go into uh, a pre-astronaut training program, let's say? Uh, well, I think, I mean, uh, so I'm not an astronaut, so I don't really know how they do that. But, but you did work think, on the Mars rover, yeah. correct? That's true. That's true. I mean, don't, don't be bashful. An astronaut. Okay, that's true. But I, I think what's, I think what's needed yeah. is uh, sort of the ability to solve problems in, in a, from a very broad point of view. And, uh, and it's common to be taught how to solve problems, you know, in some sort of narrow, here's an algorithm, here's an algorithm. But what we try to do, at least in, in mathematics, is, is um, give them problems that they haven't seen before, so we have to bring creativity to it. And one of the strengths that um, we have at USD is that um, we try to include uh, a very holistic approach to problem solving including the humanities, including different perspectives. And I think, I think that's what makes yes. our students strong. Yeah, we are a values-based institution. So, you know, um, all of our graduates have some value to uh, humanity, uh, to each other, uh, kindness. And uh, I think it's, uh, it's showing in their leadership abilities. Mm. What kind of things are you teaching these people to get them ready to go and work for NASA? Oh, hammer and nails for me, basically. <laughs> it's, it's just how to think outside of the box, to think creatively, just like Diane said. And uh, I think that's just so important uh, because, you know, it's not, every, not everything's wrapped up in a box uh, and all nice and neat. Yeah. You almost never have, you're almost never given problems in the real world that look like the problems that you get uh, in college. So what you really hope for is just to get some skills by having seen a whole variety of different things. You just get strengths and creativity and ingenuity and, and patience and dedication to address new problems. Did you see something special in these two students specifically when they were in your classroom? Oh yeah. Mm. Did you yeah. really? Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't have. So, um, so Johnny was. Uh, I'm sure he still is. A very um, sort of responsible, calm, dedicated force that uh, would just focus and get through his studies. And he was completely sincere about um, his learning and his he'd bring questions. He wanted to know every last thing. He never, he never even seemed, you know, nervous about anything. He just came in and said, "Well, now, 
let's talk about this. And oh yeah, I think the students in our class, I think they, they felt a little in awe of him too, yeah. Incredible, how about uh, Matt really Matt, fast? Matt was very focused on flying jets. That's what he wanted to do is fly jets. And um, I understand also that he uh, mentioned to our department chair that he wanted to be an astronaut. Mm. But all I knew is that he wanted to fly jets, and to, in order to do that, he just wanted to excel at uh, everything that he did. I think, uh, I think as a naval aviator, he has to excel um, at uh, his uh, chosen endeavor, and uh, he sure did that. But clearly, it's also a representation of what they took away from your classroom. So job right. well done yeah. for teaching now thank these you. people that are going to be going on and, uh, you know, leading the way, literally. So, Diane and Ernest, thank you so much for coming in tonight. Thank you. Thank you, guys.